Hello, friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. Let's take a quick lap of the fish room. Take a look what's been going on around. <laughs> a preview. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's cichlids and coffee. I hope you're having a cup of your favorite beverage wherever you might be in the world. And uh, Larry O'Brien is in Clearwater. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me where you folks are. Let's do some shout outs to some cities. I think I saw Kansas City. And where else have I seen here? I'm, of course, in um, Nashville where it is a balmy 95 and feels probably like 110, 75 is the dew point and almost 100% humidity. We're expecting rain this afternoon. So it is uh, very unpleasant, uh, <laughs> to say the least. At any rate, uh, <clears throat> I can tell by your comments that you are all experiencing some heat. So stay cool, stay hydrated. Keep your tanks cool if you can. Sometimes running, running fans over the tanks can help. You know, that can help keep them, keep the temperatures down. I've got a massive fan blowing air from the house into this uh, garage. I have some insulation on the door. There's insulation on the ceiling of it because there's a bedroom up there, but uh, the two side walls, I don't think, are insulated. So it does get pretty warm in here. All right. Who do we have in house? Let's see here. By the way, how's the AV? Give me an AV check here. How does the uh, sound and video, how, how does it look to you? Looks like Philadelphia is in the house. MedCow 74 in Philly. Macedonia, Ohio. All right. We have Macedonia, Ohio. By Let Lotinero. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Very, very cool. Columbia River Gorge. Wow, what a cool name. Hov de, Hov de Aquatics, Hov de Aquatics in Columbia River Gorge. Sounds like a beautiful place. Hey, what's up, Adam? What's up, Adam Frankel? Cichlid King's in the house, says the AV is great. Thank you for that, my friend. Angelo in the house. Boss in the house. Lady Diane in the house. Very good. Hello to you, Melissa. And Robert Sawinski is here. Very, very good. Hey, Robert. And Scott, hello, Ben, sounds good, from Northeast Pennsylvania. I've been to Pennsylvania quite a bit. From Pittsburgh to Hershey, I've been all over that state. Get into western Pennsylvania, it is gorgeous out there. All right, good group of people in-house. We have a few good things to talk about, and then we're going to go ahead and open it up to questions. I've had a lot going on here in the fish room, as some of you know from watching my recent video. And um, I do have a lap, so you will be getting an update. The re the, it, it, it's kind of cool that you get the update during the live stream because it's, it's, uh, it's commercial-free. If you watch the replay or when I post it later as a standalone video, you'll have probably five or six commercials in there. And so you get it. You, you, being part of the special garage gang group <laughs> you get it early so uh let's go ahead and do an official start here all right that feels official now a uh, big shout out to um, my patreon monthly supporters the group continues to grow, and it makes a huge difference uh, in keeping this fish room going and buying things like medication and fish and all kinds of good stuff. Some uh, recent uh, Patreon supporters include uh, Adam Frankel, who I believe is in-house. Adam, you rock, my friend. Noel Magion and Desert Fish. So uh, welcome to the uh, Patreon garage gang my friends you are really really helping me out and uh, to keep keep the show on the road uh, hey scott scott Patrick comes in with a uh it says noob <laughs> super chat thank you thank you for that scott for those of you not familiar super chats are a way to support the channel 
by throwing a little money at the uh, at the channel. It's at the bottom underneath the chat comments. I appreciate that. We will be doing uh, a little something special and uh, for Super Chatters today, let's see, I had some sort of a giveaway. Here we go. Any Super Chat over $15 uh, will get a couple sample packets. That's uh, I have Probiotic and I have the Vipan family packets of Sarah food. So if your uh, if your super chat is fifteen dollars or more, uh, you will receive uh, some sample Sarah food, very very high quality, highly researched. They've been around for I don't know fifty years, and have quite quite a setup over in Germany. So uh, just so you know, that is available to you. All you have to do is send me your address, full name, and, and mailing address. I have to keep it within the U.S. As some of you know, when I've tried to mail you things abroad, it, it just gets absolutely ridiculous, and uh, it, it's, uh, it just becomes a, 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 a loss leader, a big loss leader. So, All right. Vibes Aquatics in the house. Hello, Vibes. And Davey Larson. Hey, Jerry. I didn't expect to see you, my friend. Jerry was off doing good deeds, and I thought he was going to be busy. But here you are. And if you need to leave early, I understand. All right, so I do have a lap of the fish room for you I, I, uh, that I want to share with you. I also have today's topic. Uh, you know, it, it's, um, it's very interesting having a fish room for, for, a, for a variety of reasons. And... Uh, uh, one of them, and I've talked about this before, one of them is that you are literally, literally you're, you're in a, you're, you're in a glass, you're in a glass cage. I mean, the fish are in the aquarium, but YouTubers are, are sort of in a, in a phone or TV or PC, depending how you watch it. You know, I'm, I'm sort of in, in your electronic aquarium and you you check out what's going on and and it's just all out there you know it's all out there uh, if you're if you're not doing that things happen and you, you 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 sort of move on but when you're a youtuber i mean when you're a youtuber you move on as well but but it's all video documented and uh, the good and the bad now let me be very clear. It is mostly, mostly good. It is mostly good having a, having a fish room. And a fish room that's at a size that is manageable. This fish room right now is, at the, is, is probably at the limit of number of tanks I want to have. Uh, more tanks would probably require more time than I'm willing to, uh, time and effort. Unless I got into things like automatic uh, water changing systems, and uh, you know, automated it that way, I, I don't, I don't think I'm, I would want to have it be much, much more than this. Uh, this is why I don't get into, let's say, breeding, for example, because then I'd have to have a, a large number of of tanks to to grow out the different the different cycles of fry that would come through, right? And so, this is. This is good right now. I've got enough mix. I've got South and Central Americans. I've got planted tanks. I've got some overflow tanks that I can use. And um, it, it's right at that level where it's, it doesn't feel like work. It, it, it's, still, it's still a lot of fun, and it still very much feels like a hobby. But any, any place where something goes on that is non-optimal, is going to be shared. So you've got to have, you've got to have a little bit of a thick skin, and you've got to have um, a certain degree of willingness to be upfront, willingness to kind of put it out there and not not hide hide things because you're afraid of the reaction you're going to get. You're afraid people are not going to like you, or they're going to think less of you. Or you have to put all that aside. Put your ego aside. 
and and just put it out there. And so, you know, like right now, I'm I'm dealing with some uh, some hole in the head that that's been. When I look back on it, honestly, I mean, it, it it started showing up. Looking back on some videos months ago, little little pits that were dismissed as you know scraped against something or you know didn't really matter much to me i talk all about it in the most recent video and then uh it it started to become a bit more uh pronounced to the point now where where uh it's noticeable it's noticeable and so this kind of stuff is not stuff like okay let me take these fish and let me stick them in a back aquarium and let me just not bring them up. That's not how I roll. For me, it's okay. We're we're all going to go through uh, a hole in the head together. And for those of you who have been through it, you're giving me valuable input. Uh, one valuable tip was, um, of course, a whip with uh, you know big water changes. I think we all agree that's good. Uh, someone said that in the wild. Uh, geophagus, AC Hecalis, have fruit trees, fruit trees that grow over, uh, you know, o over their habitat, and they will go up and pick off fruit, and and that will give them that gives them a a steady uh, diet of vitamin C, which is is probably not a prominent a prominent vitamin in fish food. Now I'm going to check all my fish foods today. And see what the vitamin C content is, uh, if any, in those fish foods, and and see what's going on there, and then uh, perhaps do a, a a YouTube search and see if there are some foods out there that are have a bit more vitamin C in them. So it, it's it's a learning, it's an ongoing learning process, and when something happens. Whether it's uh, illness, fish death, uh, mistakes, or very positive outcomes, it's out there. It's out there in the community, and and you've got to just you really can't you can't be thin skinned. You can't let your ego get in the way of anything. You just have to be like, okay, put it out there. Let people say what they say. Listen to the comments. Learn from the ones that you can learn from. Uh, disregard any of them that are just trolling, and uh, and and keep the process going. I've been uh, indirectly, uh, you know, with 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 moments with moments uh, uh, with of gaps in the schedule, of course. But I've been keeping fish since I was, uh, you know, five or six. So I mean, over sixty years, I've been keeping fish. I've never had to deal with hole in the head. I've had people comment under the video. Hey, for 30 years, I've had fish, 20 years, 10 years, never had hole in the head. And one of the misconceptions, I think, that, that, that fish keepers get into, and I think it happens everywhere, uh, we can get a bit complacent, whether it's how we drive, uh, you know, the way we eat, whatever, whatever, we get complacent. Using the idea, because it hasn't happened, it's not going to happen. And of course, that's a bit of faulty logic, because uh, because something hasn't happened does not. It just means that it hasn't happened. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. <laughs> At any rate, from every experience, with your help, with your input, with your comments and feedback, I've been able to uh, continue learning and growing. And that has been very, very, very valuable. And so I appreciate all of you who have watched the um, the video that I put out on the uh, head lateral line erosion, H-L-L-E, uh, the uh, hole in the head, and commented under that video because it's, uh, again, it's one of those things where you can tap into a community, a community of fish keepers, and it's far more valuable than Wikipedia or, you know, anything really. I'm, I'm talking to people who have lived through it and dealt with it and, and listened to their results. And so it's, 
and I know it's anecdotal. I know you might say, well, gee, is that, is that science? It, it, in my mind, it, it's very valuable in, in getting data from folks that have been through the process. And that's a big plus point to being on YouTube. Now, some of you out there are thinking about starting a YouTube channel. I, I highly recommend it for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, you will have an uh, ongoing video videography a record an ongoing record of your of your fish of your you know of your fish adventure of your fish progress and you'll be able to go back five or six years and go oh i remember that fish or wow i've really put on some weight or whatever <laughs> whatever the case might be you'll, you'll be able to go back and have this record that is being kept uh you know in storage by youtube and as of right now, and of course this could change, uh, YouTube will store, in my case, over 1,000 videos without charging me anything for the storage. On the contrary, they're paying me for a certain number of views, right? So start a channel, even if you are keeping your videos unlisted or private, uh, I recommend you take advantage of this, you know, uh, of this that's available to you at, at really at no cost. That might change. I mean, maybe someday YouTube will turn around and go, well, if you don't have this many subscribers, you've got to pay this much. I know Twitter is going through some stuff like that where they're asking people to pay memberships and stuff, and who knows? For those of you who uh, joined in late, we are uh, doing a little giveaway today, and it's not entirely a giveaway because it, depends on uh, a super chat but any super chat over fifteen dollars helps to cover the uh, channel is going to uh, receive uh, some of this Sarah and I have both the probiotic and the Vipan family and it's nice and fresh good until 625 and uh, if you're not familiar with Sarah, very very high end very re heavily researched and it's out of germany and at any rate so i will be sending out some of these for any super chats over 15 bucks and that way i feel like i'm giving you something back all right so i have a lap for you that you get to see before anybody else and you get to see commercial free let's go ahead and jump into the lap and then after the lap I'm going to tell you something funny that happened, and and I'll go ahead and take up any questions that you might have about the fish lap or about anything that's going on here in the fish room. So let's go ahead and uh, take a lap of the fish room. Hello, friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. Let's take a quick lap of the fish room, take a look what's been going on around here, and uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We'll start with the 300-gallon uh, African cichlid tank. As you can see, the fish in here are doing very, very well. Some great colors going on. The addition of these uh, movement of the last time I moved these rocks here and rearranged these plants, I haven't had a uh, a breeding pit inc incident since then. For some reason, it calmed down this. Uh, this trout so he's not so uh, such a horn dog right now <laughs> and as a result all the fish are a little calmer a little more colored up and swimming throughout the entire tank boy this kawingi is really beautiful a little sand diver that uh, for some reason this venusis doesn't seem to be growing much I've I've had a lot of venusis over the years and they they tend to grow like beasts, this one's a real slow grower, as opposed to like the uh, the Fusco that just exploded. You can see him back there. He's just just a beast. When he comes a little closer, you'll see he's grew like crazy. Little turquoise cichlid, Malawi gar. Crazy lips. 
Buchochromis rhodesii yellow. Beautiful combination of colors on that fish. Ostrigatus, cousin of the eye biter. Go over here and look at the betta tank. Some of you mentioned that a betta might do better in betta, 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 might do better <laughs> in a smaller tank. So I'm thinking of moving the uh, Anubius and the Sprite and the natural wood and four or five handfuls of substrate, some almond leaves and just move them over here to this tank, this little five gallon. Lights off on it right now, but just move them in here and maybe even move this upstairs. But uh, I mean, he seems to be doing well in this 29, but some folks have said that they, they tend to be a little more content in a tank where they don't need to swim quite as much Maybe you can you can uh, let me know what you think about that. But but this little Dumbo is really pretty. Picked him up locally, about ten bucks, fifteen bucks. We're over at a local fish store. I think it might even have been a Petco. He was kind of pale, but he had great shape. And then I brought him home and with some good food, you know, taking care of him, he, he really just started to blossom. Got a lot of pink in the body, more blue. Those colors were very pale when I brought him home, but of course he was living in a cup at that point. Come over the live bear tank. Live bear tank is doing what it's doing. Keeps producing fry. I, I saw one little teeny one up here in the Sprite. I mean like the size of a, the period at the end of a sentence. Oh, there he is. Not sure if you can make him out. Very teeny. We'll see if he makes it. Some of the guppies have made it. And of course, some of the uh, Mickey Mouse platies have made it. You'll notice those new plants in this tank. That's all brand new. Hopefully it'll catch. I noticed it has roots coming out throughout. I wonder if this plant could float. If you're familiar with this plant, and, uh, and it, let me know if, it's a, if, it, if it can float. But for now, it's, uh, it's in the substrate. But I noticed it is shooting out roots from everywhere. The live bears are doing well. Again, they love that. Uh, they love zucchini and cucumber. Everybody gets on it. Snails, plecos, fish peck at it. You'll notice the little bumblebees are over here. I brought the bumblebee platies over from quarantine and uh, they're loving life. Nothing new to report here on the 29. At this point it remains relatively empty waiting for a new project. Siamese algae eater is tearing apart this uh, cucumber hanging on this uh, Zoomed. This is a, it's a Zoomed floating Floating a vegetable holder, which I really like. One of them, though, filled up with water and sank. So they're not all entirely, uh, they're not all going to float like they say they will. If you watched my last video, you know I'm battling uh, some hole in the head disease in this tank. I'm doing a lot of uh, water changes. I'm going to be uh, making sure they get a real good, varied diet. Uh, putting some C, some vitamin C. Helping, helping them out any way I can. And if I don't start to see it clear up, 
uh, next step will be to go ahead and just hit the tank with a, hit it with some uh, Fritz Paracleanse, which has the uh, has the medication combination to help with something like hole in the head. The other fish, interestingly enough, the Severums have no sign of it. I don't think it's considered a contagious disease. So, and that and, that, and that's a good thing. This Severum has become, uh, my red shoulder has become a little bit more bold, a little more active, where usually he would never come up to the camera like this. And usually the uh, red spotted gold Severum would be really staying far away from him. So it looks like the two of them have sort of made up and are now, uh, at least for now, they're buddies. The AC Heckli has a very light, light case of the hole in the head. It's more prominent in the, uh, in the geos. It'll usually start you know, on the head, work its way around the eye, and then down the lateral line of the body. That's what's referred to as head and lateral line erosion. So wish me luck on that after uh, the Saturday live stream. I'm gonna go ahead and give this tank another big water change. The red tear is doing fine in the 55. He's got his nose in his cave. But you can see what he's done here. He's completely uh, moved all the substrate. I think when I brought him back over, I had the substrate nice and level. And he's removed all of the substrate underneath the cave. So the cave is actually on the glass bottom. And he's created this big ridge right here to the size of it. So he's been busy. He's been busy moving stuff around. Beautiful fish over here in the uh, 210 gallons, South and Central American tank. Business as usual with Firemouth and the Nicaragua arguing. Silver dollars are doing fine. None of them looked overly harassed. Salvini is behaving. For the most part. Very territorial. I can't even imagine if, if I was to breed, breed this female, I mean, she would probably go insane. Keep everybody in a corner. The chocolates are looking great. completely healed up from some of the damage in that recent uh, experiment I did with the red tear. Nicaragua. Green tear is looking good. I, I've had to really watch how I feed him since he spits out all the pellets. So I, uh, I feed them like uh, frozen uh, or dried worms, dried shrimp. I just got to really make sure I drop it in the tank right above his head so he can have a shot at it. Otherwise, the Oscars hog all the food. The Oscars get in there and they just sort of bully everybody away from the food. Even the big giant uh, vieja. doesn't have a chance against these Oscars when it comes to going after the food. But between using floating and, uh, and sinking food, everybody's able to get it. Here they go. Okay, in this corner from Nicaragua, 
they love doing that for some reason. It never gets violent. It just it's just one face off after another. There's the old Jack Dempsey just cruising around. Growing very, very slowly, just like the green tear. Just a slow grower. The dominant uh, silver dollar continues to try to breed with, with all the females. You see it has the black markings on the, on the anal fin, on the side of the body, chasing them around. Use the horn dog of this tank. So there's this week's uh, update, uh, lap of the fish room. Any comments, tips, ideas, be sure to share them below. We all learn from each other around here, of course. And we'll also talk about this and everything else at the Saturday cichlids and coffee live stream. Great group of fish keepers get together for about an hour and talk about everything related to fish keeping and, uh, and a few other things. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button, thumbs up, and all that good stuff. Let YouTube know something good's going on. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. It starts for as little as $3 a month, and it makes a much bigger difference than you could imagine. All right. Thank you, my friends. You are the best. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Don't you love it when uh, a program that you're watching gives you a commercial for the program that you're watching? You know, you're watching a TV program, and there's a commercial, and it's telling you about this program, and it happens to be the program. <laughs> That's what I thought of when I saw the... And don't forget, tune in for Cichlids and Coffee on Saturday. So, anyway, that is the... Uh, that's this week's lap. It will be uh, posted later today as a standalone video. And let, if you have any questions about any of that... And I'll tell you, the, the funny thing that happened was... and and I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you can never, you never, never rest on your laurels. Uh, never feel like you've got it wired entirely. Never get overconfident. N never let your ego, you know, or your head get too big. Uh, the second I, I, I posted. The second I, I, I finished editing that video. The, the trout. Mr. Mr. Horn Dog of all Horn Dogs blackens out on the bottom. You see the way his bottom is all black. Blackens out and goes, "Oh, oh, you're 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 talking about me not not making any any pits. Watch." And away he goes. Make starts making a pit. Corrals everybody over here to this side. You can see him all over here. Come on, guys, get out of there. So he really showed me. He was Mr. Uh, Mr. Cool for, for a day and a half. And uh, anyway. So don't, uh, don't, don't ever, um, right when at that moment, you know, that, that old, uh, you know, that pride before the fall, you know, right at that moment where, all right, I've got it nailed. Then, of course, that's, that's usually right when it all falls apart. At any rate, he does look beautiful when he's fired up, right? I think he's even thinking about biting my finger. Come here. Anyway, quite a, quite a fish. Quite a fish. Lady Diane, yes, that, that Salvini. Somebody, somebody said, why didn't you just take the Salvini out of the, out of the 210 gallon? And uh, isn't that, wouldn't that calm things down? Well, the truth is the Salvini just kind of stays on her side. And she did get a little wild when she took over that big cave and was shooting out from it. But when I took that cave out of there, she went back to just defending her little corner of the aquarium. But she really, 
she really is, despite not being the biggest fish. I mean, you could make a case for the Vieja or the Red Tiger Oscar being the centerpiece. But to a large degree, that, that Salvini is, is, is like the centerpiece of that aquarium and probably gets more comments, more oh wows than any other fish in that aquarium. So uh, needless to say, I'm very reluctant. I was very reluctant and really never considered that as an option, you know, removing the, the Salvini from the 210 gallon. He's just too darn pretty. He's just too pretty. So um, let's see here. Let's see what questions you have. Yeah, I was talking about you, man. Talking about you. Anyway, he's a great fish. And, and you know, he when he gets into his, his mood, he'll corral fish, but he doesn't kill fish. As opposed to, let's say the... Uh, Let's say the Bucachromus notatania yellow. Let's say if that fish became the boss of this tank instead of the trout, he'd probably he'd probably kill fish. He'd probably kill fish without without a doubt. He would probably be a killer. But he's kept in check by that trout, and that that's a good thing. Denny in the house. Hey, Denny. He is turning Edith his fiance turning her into a fish keeper. <laughs> oh, hey, Finn, go, go Finn in the house. Love that trout. Just very hard fish to find in the size I need. They are. They're not a, a and if you do find them, the, the price is usually crazy, not even counting the shipping, but they're out there. You know, they're out there. Uh, I know the cichlid shack grew some out. Uh, and there are other folks out there that that I'm sure, um, maybe Cunningham, uh, folks like that. I mean, there there are folks out there that are growing them out. I remember the Wonder of Cichlids used to have some beautiful, uh, but I don't know what happened to the Wonder of Cichlids. If they're even in the, uh, are they still around? Do you folks know? Is the Wonder of Cichlids still out there selling fish? I know that that there was a problem with a very large order that ended up not working out. Like he didn't get the order after putting a lot of money out. He got sort of ripped off or something. I forget. I don't know what the whole story was, but anyway, he, he used to have some beautiful, beautiful trouts. Football, typical fire mouth behavior. Yeah. Always trying to face off with everybody. Never really turns into anything uh, crazy. Fortunately. And it's funny, it's usually with the uh, Nicaragua, maybe because they're comparable in size, but you don't see them facing off with the, with the Vieja or the, uh, the Jack Dempsey or the Green Terror, even though they're, they're close in size. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through your questions here. Let's see. Boss wants to know about putting the the uh, the pads phosphate pads. I would say I started noticing a difference within two to three weeks, and after about six weeks, the phosphate pads were uh, exhausted. So you go ahead and pull them out. You can probably rinse them and use them again a few times, but uh, once they become very very caked up, boss, I, I usually would go ahead. And just cut cut some new ones. Just as a side note, uh, they also work very well in like the leftover pieces after you cut them to fit your filter. The leftover pieces work very well to clean your aquarium, whether it be the glass, the surface of uh, plants, you know, that are that are rugged enough for you to be able to clean them with a pad without ripping them, and. Uh, so just something I do with the pads. Adam Frankel, Ben, I know you are a Fritz guy, but wouldn't Seachem Cichlid Trace be a good source of vitamin C to help with vitamins for hole in the head? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if tra if if. The cichlid, if you're talking about the same cichlid 
trace I'm thinking about, it's mostly um, trace minerals. I'm not sure if it has. Uh, I'm not sure if it has a lot of vitamins in it. And uh, I, I do have, and and that's what I was, I was using the uh, the Seachem Malawi Lake Malawi. They call it Lake Malawi salt, but it's not really salt. It's it's a trace mineral, and it's very similar to the uh, to the Fritz Malawi Lake combination, which is really just an attempt to uh, have the same. Which I ha I use in this aquarium. I use the trace minerals, and it's the same ratio of trace minerals that exist in lake malawi now is that vital i don't think it hurts but these fish are probably i think a couple of them are f1 which means their parents came from the lake but the rest of these are probably four or five generations or more tank bred so i'm not I'm not sure how vital that is but now, did, you, did any of you recognize that new plant that I bought? And do you think that that's a plant? Do you think that's a plant I could cut, like wherever I see the long, the long roots shooting out on the stalk, and I cut it right below those roots and create cuttings that can then be, be, uh, be moved under the substrate? And instead of having 10 plants, I end up with 30 plants because I'm able to cut I mean, is that something you think I can do with that plant if you're familiar with that plant? Ludwilla? 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 Lud I believe is the name of it. I'm not sure. It starts with an L, but let me know. Vibes Aquatics comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Hey, look at that. I can give a super chat a heart. I didn't even know I could do that. I could like a super chat. That's a new feature from YouTube. Let me see that I have that option. Does it have to be a certain amount? or Yeah, see, I don't see it on Scott's Super Chat. All right. So, uh, Angelo, I am going to get some uh, Vitacam. I was actually checking it during that lap video. It's not too expensive. I'm going to pick some of that up, some Vitacam. Thank you for the tip. Okay, so Michael says those plants need to be in the substrate. Okay, okay. So it's not like now. Can you do cuttings? Can you do cuttings right, right, you know, right below the the roots, and then put those roots into the substrate? Is that something that you can do? Can you do cuttings and and you know, like you can with some plants that shoot out roots everywhere? Can you do a cutting below the root and put that? And then you end up with a lot of smaller plants. Is that something you can do with that plant? Do you happen to know that? Vibes Aquatics. Have you tried, she say, whale canister filters? And by the way, I've emailed you. Uh, Vibes, I haven't uh, tried, she say, whales. Look at that. I was able to give you, maybe it's the amount. Uh, no, I haven't tried. And don't forget to send me a, uh, all of your information for some food there, Vibes Aquatics. Thank you. Maybe that's what you meant by you emailed me. So, um, Austin Johns, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. You are appreciated. Phantom Aquatics, great name. I left you a detailed comment on your Hole in the Head video about a study funded by the Toledo Zoo. No need to check it right now, but definitely worth the read. When you have time. Thank you, Phantom Aquatics. I appreciate that and I will be checking that out. Now, let me ask you something because there are folks on the stream right now, like Jerry's Fish Room, that would like to know more about Hole in the Head. Would you be willing to share that link in a comment right here in the chat? And um, I think some folks on the stream would appreciate that. Lady Diane, all stem plants have that. Okay, thank you for that. So I think I'm going to turn those uh, those ten cuttings into thirty cuttings. I'll just go in and I'll let them get established a little bit, and uh, you know, get over the the little shock that plants go through when you first 
move them and plant them. And when they start to show some uh, some nice stability, maybe some new new growth, I'll go ahead and do some cuttings. And that's good to know. Very good to know. Thank you for that. Thank you, Phantom. Appreciate that. Good morning to you, Price Tag. Or you're, so you're saying good morning to Salient Aquatics. All right. Any questions, comments, tips? Let's hear them right now. Do you folks have a mug? I'm telling you, when you watch the stream, you get a lot more out of it if you're drinking from one of these mugs. <laughs> there are uh, a lot more than just mugs. If you go to the Teespring uh, store, uh, there's T-shirts and mugs and uh, hoodies and, and uh, a variety of things. I still don't have a hat. I'd love to get a hat. If one of you know a good contact for a That'll make a, a nice hat. Send me the contact information to my ben.o.cichlid at, uh, at Gmail. But, uh, yeah, there's a couple cool things there. Check it out at the Teespring store. For those of you who have recently purchased mugs and teas, thank you so much for that. I did notice, and I appreciate it. And as I mentioned earlier, a very big shout-out and thank you to the recent new additions to the Garage Gang and those included, as they scroll up, can I get a, 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 drum, a drum roll, please? Adam Frankel, Noel Mangion, hope I pronounced that right, and Desert Fish. Thank you so much for joining, for joining the Garage Gang. All right, let's see here. Any other questions for me that you would like to ask? And Phantom Aquatics is going to provide us with that link. There it is. Statistically, the results were definitive. That achieved carbon use. Wow. Holy moly. Okay. Now, that's an update to the 2016. Definitely an update to the 2016 um, study that i mentioned in my video activated carbon who knew who knew right and for how many years have we been using it and i i and i always promote the uh, the activated uh, carbon from ccam Right, that matrix carbon, which absorbs incredibly. And at any rate, I think the moral of that story is if you have a bad smell or you want to remove some residual medication, put that carbon in, but put it in for just a, a week, maybe a month max, and then pull it out. Now, I wonder if, um, I wonder if, Things like your your resin, your resin based uh, chemical filtrations, like you know, like 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 your irrigation, if something like that actually uh, would have the same effect. I know they're similar, but uh, very that's very interesting to me. I'm telling you, always be learning, always learning. I think it's time that that might be a that might be the topic of an upcoming video. What would be a good title? Is activated carbon killing your fish? Can activated charcoal kill your fish? Could this be a problem? I'll come up with a title. If you folks have some ideas, share them in the chat. Robert, I finally remembered on my last Amazon order to use your affiliate link. Feel free to keep uh, reminding us. Some people like me have a very short. <laughs> oh, 
Yes, if you shop on Amazon, please access Amazon by you by using uh, use Amazon.com slash shop slash Ben Ochart one word. Now what will happen is you'll go into my Amazon store and then all you do is you just type in what you're shopping for. So you're looking for a new computer, you're looking for a camera, you're looking for a pillow. You type it in search, and it takes you to the general Amazon site. But because you used my link to get there, it's going to give the channel a small credit. It's like 0.01% it's .001 of your purchase. But it adds up, and it helps. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just how you access Amazon. So thank you so much for that, Robert. I appreciate it. What's going on, guys? I heard some splashing. What's happening? All right. I stopped using carbon years ago. It's funny. I, 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 I've used it, like I said, only after using meds. Um, if there's ever, ever any kind of, if it doesn't smell like you could drink your aquarium, it, then you need to replace it. You, you need to put a little bit of something in there. But Purigen will do it too. So if resin-based chemical filtration doesn't have that effect, then I would say just ditch carbon altogether because uh, Purigen will also absorb uh, residual medication in your aquarium. And you don't have the, uh, I don't think with the resin, it can then start to release it back into the aquarium after a while i know some people say carbon after a while becomes ex exhausted and will start to release back into the tank some of the things it's gathered up don't think that happens even though resin-based chemical filtration does expire and either needs to be recharged like in the case of pyrogen you can recharge it up to like eight times eight or ten times or chemipure blue or chemipure green which you just simply have to throw out after six months, and uh, and then go ahead and replace it. Came pure blue being the general product, green for tanks with uh, plants. Yeah, Enrique. Enrique, uh, you have. Uh, congratulations, Enrique. Uh, you have uh, a horn dog. The official name, if you uh, look in the uh, scientific literature, is uh, a horn dog fish. And so you have uh, you have a horn dog fish. And so uh, I have a couple. And uh, and over here uh, behind me, I have a, a a horn dog silver dollar. So um, yeah. Yeah, you have a horn dog. Now, if it's creating a lot of problems, a tremendous amount of problems, I imagine you could pull him out until he cools down. But um, you know, it kind of comes in waves. With with mine, it would usually be after a water change or a top off that would trigger it. And they say it has to do with the rains, you know, hitting the the rivers or lakes or whatever uh, that triggers it. Uh, shifts in temperature triggers it. Um, but now it's just been random. Now he just all of a sudden his bottom half will darken up, and uh, and we're and away we go. And he pairs up with the uh, with the sand diver, who's like, hey, you know, I'll be your girlfriend if it means I can. I'm not going to get beat up. I'll, I'll be I'll be your gal. <laughs> and who am I to judge? So so at any rate. Anybody else have a horn dog fish? Tell me in the chat if you have a horn dog, and uh, let me know. <laughs> oh, yeah, Phantom Aquatics. I might just be putting out a video on that study. That is fascinating, and how many people out there are keeping that uh, charcoal in that aquarium and replacing it, and just keeping it there all the time. So. 
Always be learning. Okay, my friends, it looks like we're creeping up on the hour. I have um, a football is asking a question. Yeah, if you, want, if you have more questions, I'll hang around if you have more questions. But football wants to know if I have a Siamese. I don't have the the the, the Siamese or Chinese. I don't have the 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 uh, the SAEs, the Siamese alligators. I have one in the twenty nine gallon hospital tank that I bought as part of an experiment for bearded algae, and he stayed there because I heard they can be a little aggressive. So I don't want him in my planted aquarium. In the planted aquarium, I have um, I have three little auto synclists, maybe four. I have four little autos, and they're like an inch. They're under an inch, and they're really cute. They just sort of sit on the blades, you know, of the of the cribs, and they're just really cute fish. Autos. I have autos, so um, that's what I have in there. That's my algae control in the planted aquarium. All similar. Well, that's a good point. You know, I haven't thought about that. And, but I do, I do clean that area. It is easy to neglect it. But uh, this is a good point. If you get some food that gets caught under the rim, and I imagine if you run a high water line and you have glass covers, you can get food on your glass. Uh, you know, there are things that could be producing a smell, but isn't necessarily the water. So what you would uh, then you go and you put charcoal in there when you don't need it when all you need to do is you know grab a, a a soft cloth or something and just simply clean that rim that edge and clean that out. That's a very good point. Very very good point. Thank you for that. Assimilate. Love these YouTube names. All right, any more questions? Looks like somebody else hit me with a super chat. Did I miss that last super chat? Vibes Aquatics? Oh, that was on the Cisse Whale. We talked about that one. And was there another one? I'm cruising the chat here, trolling the. You're welcome, Lady Diane. You're welcome for that. I appreciate the kind words. Was that Frank Vera? Hey, Frank. For the fight against HLLE. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate that, my friend. Muchas gracias, amigo. Uh, Vibes Aquatics, I do believe you can live stream with uh, StreamYard on all platforms that allow live streaming that have live streaming. So that would be my answer. I am not a StreamYard expert, but I have used it in, um, in doing interviews, like the North Finn interview. That was, a, um, that was done with StreamYard. Thank you, Vibes Aquatics. And yes, be sure to uh, hit me with a thumbs up before you leave. Finn go Finn go Finn. Right after this, I got to do some canister cleaning. My least favorite part of the hobby. Hey, check out some of my canister maintenance uh, videos. There might be some tips in there, depending on the kind of canister you have, that might make that job just a little bit easier. I have an entire playlist with tips on canister maintenance. 
I'm going to have to crack open my canisters. I leave them. Uh, I don't have to mess with them for long periods of time because I have the pre-filter. The pre-filter lets me go for about nine months. It holds on to big waste, prevents sand from going in, and uh, catches food so the fish can eat off the pre-filter so it doesn't waste food. Uh, it, it's just a great idea. I pull it off every week or two and rinse it under, under running water. And uh, anyway, I love pre-filters. I think you know that. Uh, Paul McCarthy jumped right on it there, cleaning off the old food around the top of the rim of the tanks. Well, there you go. Davy Larson for the cause. Thank you, Davy. It looks like we have a little uh, tele uh, telephone starting here. A super chat tele telephone. I appreciate appreciate you folks that um, reach in your pocket and help out. It's always really appreciated. You don't have to do it, but uh, it helps out a lot. Cichlid Kings, Finalist, something talking about uh, your. This is a conversation with somebody else. Canisters do not have to be that hard to clean. Now, what I used to do is I would run water into a bucket from the tank, and then just and then pull the canister out, open the canister, rinse the sponges in the in the tank water bucket, and then just put them right back into the canister. That was pretty easy, and um, some people don't scrub down their canisters so that they're like new because they think a little bit of that mulm might be important for the beneficial bacteria, and so um, I tend to make my canisters pretty clean, and again, because I feel that a lot of the bacteria is here in the substrate, on the rocks, on the plants, in this case, the artificial plants. So um, on the walls of the aquarium. And of course, I have a sump under here that has massive sponges, four inch wide, 14 inch tall, I think what, 10 inches, four inches thick, 10 inches wide, 14 inches. I mean, they're big sponges. And there's, uh, and there's some um, Vera and some Matrix. You know, um, ceramic type also in there, biomedia. I mean, the, the sump is just loaded with beneficial bacteria. So I don't worry about uh, rinsing anything in regular tank, in, uh, in regular tap water. All right. And yes, clean the impeller. Cichlid King makes a good point. Impeller efficiency drops very quickly. When it gets gummed up, so be sure to clean those impellers. With the FX6, of course, that's a that's a big job. You got to remove the motor, and uh, you know disassemble and really make sure you reassemble it correctly, or you'll have a leak or a noise. Very often, a noisy canister filter means that you haven't seated the impeller correctly, and it's cavitating. It's moving this way, so you got to really make sure that impeller is seated correctly or else you'll have a noisy canister and phantom aquatics has a fx6 on the 180 yeah i tell you i love having that uh, you can shut off your uh, your sump do some sump maintenance and let that fx6 just keep running it's awesome Waynard Wolmerans is uh, looking at a Louisville 307 for $111. Is that a good deal, folks? I don't know. I'm not familiar with that. Is a Fluval 307 a good deal at $111? Why $111? Such an interesting price. Offer them $99 and see if they take it. And eleven cents, nine nine dollars and eleven cents. Finn Golan, all right, picked up some uh, 
picked up some filters, pre-filters from the Aquarium Co-op. Now, by the way, I do have an Aquarium Co-op affiliate link. And it is in the description underneath most of my videos. If you use that link, I will get some credit from the Aquarium Co-op. I wonder how many folks have gone to the Aquarium Co-op and bought things, and uh, the Aquarium Co-op has no idea that they heard about it from yours truly. But you know what? I'm not complaining. The Aquarium Co-op takes good care of me. If I call them up and I tell them I need something, usually they're very quick at sending it as an affiliate. So no complaints about the Aquarium Co-op. Kent A J D K in the house. Now, don't forget, folks, any of you who did Super Chats today, even if it's several of them that added up, if you're over $15 total Super Chats, be sure to send me your complete name and mailing address to ben.o.cichlid at gmail, and I am going to send you out some Sarah high quality food very high quality highly researched if you would like a channel sticker sent with the food tell me in the email and i will include a holographic sticker Is it time to uh, end off the live stream? Yes, yes. You've gone too long. Time to end off. All right. You heard it. You heard it from Mr. Bobblehead. I can't argue with him. <laughs> Did any of you order a bobblehead? I don't know why. I just think they're so funny. I can't even say bobblehead without laughing. All right, folks. You are the best. You are wonderful. Love you all. I think it's time we go ahead and wrap this up so you folks can go have a hot weekend. And thank you so much, everybody. You are the best live stream crowd around. You rock. And I hope to see you this coming weekend, next weekend, same time, same channel. And thank you to my wonderful, uh, wonderful moderators for all the help. Thank you to all of you who are subscribed. Thank you to all of you who watched, and thank you to my super chatters, and a big shout out to all of you who are in the Garage Gang. You are the best. Thank you, my friends. That's it for me. I'll see you again soon.